CMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Good evening, everybody. It's David Morgan, Arlington's environmental planner and conservation agent. The October 17th, 2024 public meeting of the Arlington Conservation Commission will be conducted in a remote format consistent with Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023 which extended remote participation in public meetings until 31st of March, 2025. This meeting is being recorded and the recording may be made publicly available. All meeting materials can be found at the link I'm putting into the chat now. Please note that the Zoom chat feature may be used for questions and comments that contribute to the commission's procedures and if it's used Otherwise, it may be disabled at the chair's discretion. Public comment period will follow each hearing, and uh, the Conservation Commission encourages attendees to uh, ask questions, offer comments during the public comment period. Chuck Taroni, our commission chair, will facilitate tonight's meeting, and each vote taken during the meeting will be conducted with a roll call vote. We begin with We'll call attendance and a review of the agenda. So to you, Chuck, to start things off. Uh, thanks, David. I'm going to go through the agenda first, and uh, we'll start out with administrative. Um, <clears throat> and then discussions. We have an enforcement order for uh, 66, 66R Dudley Street and 993 Massachusetts Ave. Another enforcement order <clears throat> for 335 Mystic Street and an enforcement order for 40 Park Avenue. And uh, 1293 and 1305. Waters Bodies Working Group will uh, update us. Tree Committee, CPA, Park and Rec, and Sims Conservation Restriction will all be updated uh, during the discussion section of our agenda. Our hearings tonight are all uh, RDAs, uh, Requests for Terminations of Applicability, 37 Beverly Road, uh, multiple locations from Boston Gas, and uh, a second one from Boston Gas on Mystic Street and Old Mystic Street. And with that, I will turn to the attendance. Um, Mike Gildesgame. Present. Nathaniel Stevens. Present. Susan Chapnick. Present. David White. Here. David Kaplan. Here. Brian McBride. Present. Chuck Taroni is here. Uh, associate members, Sarah Alfaro Franco is here. I heard. Yes. I didn't hear her, but I saw her. I saw her. Uh, yes. here. Eileen Coleman is. Um, I don't see Eileen's name up there, so I'm going to say Eileen is not at our meeting tonight. And with that, we're going to turn to our first uh, agenda item, and that would be administrative. Um, so correspondence, and I'll just let you know that all correspondence received in between the two meetings uh, can be uh, found at the conservation page. And if you have any issues um, retrieving any correspondence that you're looking for, reach out to David Morgan at the conservation office. David, do we have an administrative uh, report that you're going to give tonight, or is that um, just, nope? Things are just, slow. Things are slow. Really report on at the moment. Okay. Okay. So the first item up for discussion, number two on our agenda is a discussion. The first things on our agenda for a discussion is uh, 66 and 66R Dudley Street and 993 Mass Ave. The Conservation Commission is expecting to continue the discussion, uh, just continue the discussion on this matter to the meeting on November 7th, 2024. David, can you update us, uh, bring the commission up to date on what's going on here? Yes, we. I know I saw Evelyn LaRusso as one of the meeting members, and I'm not sure who else might be from the abutting property here, uh, so they can also speak to things. But we've received surveys of both properties, um, catch everybody up, and the commission will be familiar with the enforcement order, uh, a lot of fill on the floodway, 
on Millbrook along Dudley Street and uh, between there and Mass Ave. Um, so the surveys have been completed by both parties. I'm in receipt of both surveys. I can show you the images from each and um, continue the conversation from there. The, um, there we go. Just let me share a screen real quick so that we can keep talking about this. So David, just before we get too ahead here, um, the note you put on the agenda was that we're going to continue this. Are we going to go over it and then continue it? What talk about that, please? I think we'll just give an update on the surveys. I know that um, the owners at 66 Dudley were looking for some guidance about the planting plan. And um, at that point, I think we can move to the next. Okay, that makes sense. Can you uh, zoom in on that survey so we can see it better on the screen? Yeah, let's see if it'll let me. And is this on the Google Drive by any chance? No, I just got this. This one came in yesterday and the other uh, property survey came in today, I believe. So this is new info. And will it let me zoom in? Yeah, it doesn't want to let me for this one. Um, if you adjust the percentage at the top of the screen, that might do it right there. Let's see, try that. That's not, it's being very disagreeable. So at this scale, uh, we can see Dudley Street, this is the condominium. Uh, association property across Mill Brook. You can obviously see Mill Brook in there. That's that's written big enough that you can read it. Um, and this uh, survey does include the flood zone, uh, essentially through the middle of the property, maybe the lower third of the property. Um, it, it's delineated there. The uh, property lines are given on three sides, and then stops here with an indication that the property line should continue this way, but the lower property bound, which is part of what concerns us, isn't given on this one. Mike, I see you got a hand up. Yeah, no, that's what I was asking about where the condominiums property is on that side of the river. Yeah, so that's not included on this one. This is the condominium associations survey. We're mostly looking at the parking lot here. So like the lower two thirds of the screen is the uh, abutting buildings on Mass Ave, the parking lot up to so these dashed lines there, the slope going down to Mill Brook, which is between these two sets of dashed and dotted lines. It continues down that way. This is the riprap uh, wall constructed by the 66 Dudley Street owners. This highlighted portion is what the um, surveyor for the condo association says is the limit of the condo association's property. So if you compare this property line at Kathleen. Actually, let me see if it'll let me. Great. <laughs> Let's try again. Uh, if you compare the joint here, which is the lower portion of the neighboring property to 66, and then the portion that continues down on the 66 Dudley Street property. You can see that here is a line on the Catherine, sorry, Kathleen Lynch line, lot rather, continues up this way. And then the supposed 
property line for 66W goes down here. So it does seem to follow that the rest of the line would continue as suggested on this survey along this portion of the Dudley Street property, which would include going back here again, um, much more than we thought initially was part of the 66 Dudley, sorry, more is part of the condo association property than we had initially thought. In the field, we looked at this and thought, here's basically the end of the stockade fence on the 66 Dudley site, comes down, we thought, essentially to this tree. And in the field, we thought that was sort of the extent of the encroachment. The rest of this in here is all given as encroachment in the condo associations survey. We're less concerned with who owns what, where, but um, certainly we'll need the condo association's um, involvement and permission for work to proceed if in restoration is ordered on their portion of what, or what has been determined by their survey to be their property. David, is there, uh, I think when you were swiping to the other one, I saw that it was signed, but I didn't see a stamp. I didn't see a stamp or a signature on this one. Yeah, um, this is rubber survey, not stamped. Let's just ask for a stamped copy at some point. Um, I mean, we can right. discuss it, but I'm going to need stamped copies. Right, agreed. And so, I think we also need the same property lines on both maps. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's a good that. point. I was wondering why that other one that shows the property line doesn't have uh, doesn't have measurements between the meets and bounds. Right, and I don't think it's our responsibility to decide if these are comparable or not. It's their responsibility. So, I think at this point they might ask their surveyors to give the Conservation Commission one map that has the definitive lines on it. Can we ask that? Is it the same survey company? No. Of course not. But it's not our responsibility, I didn't think, to reconcile these. No, but it would certainly help us to see what's going on. If and we had one map, that's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, one map, I agree. Can we ask them to do that, or is that beyond the scope of what we can ask? I'm going to wait and see if Nathaniel answers that. Um, so, uh, David, yeah, yeah David, while well, you're thinking, I'll, I was just going to say David made a great point um, that the area to be restored uh, crosses the, the boundary line. We can obviously see that. So the boundary line isn't that important as long right. as there's an agreement to restore the area between the two properties. Now, how they figure it out, right. who's doing what, right. that's, that's, that's what the two parties also have to agree on. Conservation Commission would, would like to see this uh, restored, mm -hmm. and I don't think we really need to see a property line. I think that, that's what David was saying. I mean, clearly it's... It's I guess you're right. Star. As long as, as long because they were doing two surveys to decide how to apportion the um, the restoration costs, but that's not our problem, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I suppose there is one potential snag here that we might get hung up on, which is that the order for restoration can proceed. And if that work is conducted in advance of their settling the dispute about the boundary, yes. then it would seem to me that the folks at 66 Dudley, if they objected to the line, would be out part of their, their 
uh, in quotes because we haven't determined this, but um, it would be out of part of their property, so to speak. So I guess I'm concerned that <clears throat> the property line alignment could hold up the restoration if there's a dispute. Then... Yeah, no, it's just guessing. I mean, is there a dispute or do they just yeah, didn't I finish the speculation? I, don't, I, I think we're spending too much time on the property line, frankly. Um, I think they're, they both have enforcement orders. If they present it as two different plans, that's fine, but they need to be able to mesh, you know, be coordinated. The enforcement orders just remind me, David, they're exactly the same. So they 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 depict we didn't have an exact square foot area that they needed to restore at that point because we thought it was just that little triangle in the corner. It looks like might maybe go down a little, but whatever it is, it's the same for both properties and they just have to figure out how to get it done. Is that correct? Yes, the commission had updated both to match in order to provide the restoration plans. Okay. So did, I, I recall we, yeah, when did we update it? Sorry, do we have the updated enforcement order hmm. in the file folder? Because I remember I wrote it, but we also had a sketch that went with it. I remember- You sketched it, Nathaniel, I think. Yeah. I sketched it, yeah. I'm trying to look for that sketch in my one of my mailboxes. I'm not finding it. Because we did a screenshot and we have right. general agreements as to the the locations. Right. So mm -hmm. I, yeah. Um, so if we had a stamp plan, this plan that seems to be more complete, at least as far as the property line goes, if this plan was stamped, we have a property line. It's up to 66 to dispute that line. I haven't heard anything about that. So couldn't we proceed with this as long as it was stamped and signed as far as this is the property line? I guess if we hear in the meantime, if 66 feels like it's a, a line they want to dispute, we could we could bring them back to the commission uh, after they resolve that issue. Right, but I think the two surveys showed different information. That's my other concern. The uh, one that was prepared by 66 seemed to show locate where the um, terrace was where the pavement was, and yeah, the things other one looks not not shown on the other one, right? And I think that's why we need to, if we can find that sketch, David Morgan, um, or if you can tell me what meeting we discussed that, I can try to find it because I remember I took a screenshot. You did, and you and you drew on it while we were in the meeting. Drew on we were talking. Meeting, but... Yeah. And and what did we do with it? I think I must have. It, it was supposed to no. It was supposed to be attached to the enforce, enforcement order. That was the decision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if D David can find the enforcement order, hopefully that was done. <coughs> but D David Morgan, what's the ask for this evening? Because I thought, as Chuck said, I thought we were going to uh, defer discussion until the next meeting or in, mm -hmm. for two weeks. November 7th. The request from the owners of 66 Dudley is some guidance on the planting plan because the um, wetlands expert that they had hired for uh, planting plan has not been responsive. And so they're wondering about whether and how to go about uh, getting the restoration plan requirements satisfied. Well, I think our general thing is obviously pick na natives, right? Native plants and what? Sorry. And we also want, natives. we want to, you know, maybe some, you know, some trees, some shrubs. Trees, some, shrubs, yeah. You yeah, know, variety. we want three layers yeah. if we can get it. I mean, that depends upon, you know, one area they may be able to do that in another area, maybe not. I don't remember. I mean, at this point, are, is it, it's getting late to plant. I mean, I, I've had stuff yeah. planted mid-November, but it is getting pretty late. Yeah. So I just wonder if we should. What are you referring to, Nathaniel? 
we worked oh, on. Oh, there was yeah. something I, we had a screen share up. Uh, I was sharing my screen and marking up our discussion. That's one of the things, David, that you and I went back and forth with. I think this predated what we ended up discussing out of meeting. It's my recollection. Yes, because I recall that we, in the area, in the south southeast corner, south, sorry, southwest corner near the word regrading, that area that's in white with the dots in it, they were going to try to do some compensatory flood storage there, as I recall, and then plant down towards by the shed. But we were going to give them, you know, we were providing, allowing them to continue operating the business, obviously, and being able to get around that to the back shed and things. So that's why I think, yeah, again, it's, it's it would be helpful to have, to have the sketch in the Google Drive and with the enforcement order before just before we discuss these, I guess, because it has been a while. Um, and I just have to look to see when we last discussed it. All right. So sorry, I just don't. Yeah, I was looking in my work email. And I didn't, couldn't find it. I David, I could find our back and forth on that that you just. Uh, brought up, but I can't find the sketch that we did yeah. during the meeting. So I, 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 I would like to not go down this road. I think that we could give both um, 66 Dudley and Mass Ave direction about the plans and have them come back and then address the, the questions about the vegetation. Um, it seems like we're just stumbling over ourselves trying to figure out the plans. And I would say the plans are incomplete. We need complete plans. This is a date where we require them by. They need to correlate. I don't know what else you would add to that, but we're going to start with plans. As far as the vegetation, not finding a, um, a company to help you out, I guess, you know, at the end of the day, that's fine. We just need a plan to review. Um, and we do have our native list on the conservation website. You could pick out of that list. But when you get then to a bank and a bank restoration, it's kind of tricky. And so that's why a consultant would be the best person to have review the site and come up with a plan. I don't think that's the purview of the Conservation Commission to design anything in this situation. So a little a little frustrating again on this. I yeah, I did find David, there is should be my email to you on February, sorry, February, July 12th has a enforcement order attachment to it, restoration plan requirements, which I didn't see. Sorry, I've been going back and forth, maybe you brought it up on the screen, but I didn't see it attached to that enforcement order. And that has three, that has, I can screen share if you want. That has three, you know, restoration plan shall be filed with the commission on before July 25th with the following, remove all of the fill material, including stone retaining wall within the filled boring land subject to flooding, known as the FEMA 100 year floodplain on the Western portion of the site and provide compensatory flood storage next to restored BLSF as compensation for fill in the eastern portion alongside of Mill Brook, uh, which the commission determined is too difficult to remove. Second item, revegetation of the resulting restored floodplain and the adjacent compensatory flood storage area. Three, install a four to six foot tall fence along top of bank on the eastern portion of the property. Uh, where there is not any fencing to prevent plowing of snow and stormwater runoff into Mill Brook. And it says the restoration plan shall be prepared and stamped by a professional uh, land surveyor licensed in Massachusetts and she'll show all existing conditions. So I think uh, it's, it's, yeah, I agree with Chuck. It's incomplete based on what I could see, but David Morgan, uh, you, you might be able to use this checklist, the, Enforce restoration plan requirements as a checklist to help guide the uh, property owners about what's missing off of that plan. Sure, we'll start there. Would be my suggestion. David, that was sent, wasn't it? 
Is that the one that went certified? Okay. So I, I would suggest we move on. It's I see in the chat that um, two people are here from the Millbrook condos. Yeah, let's hear from, unless any other commission members have something to say, let's hear from uh, the condo association. Sure, this is uh, Franco Pasquale, uh, one of the trustees of uh, 993. So I think first the first step was just understanding that border because without having that, you know, we kind of, uh, to your point before, we don't know if there is encroachment or there isn't. Uh, at this point, based on our map, we can see that there's encroachment. And I think we're looking forward to connecting with the uh, property owners at uh, 66 Dudley to look at their plan and what, you know, see what, what they were planning. We haven't seen that yet. So I think it's engaging with them at this point to show them that map and to uh, understand what they were planning. Okay. Um, yeah, it might be helpful if when David Morgan sends those plans out to the commission, also send them to each other, each, exchange them with the two property owners and exchange the contact information if they don't have it. Evelyn, um, are you available to speak on the survey at your property uh, tonight? Sure. So uh, I, my, my first question is, why wasn't it uh, complete? And we're wondering about the property line down by the um, brook. So complete, you mean by the stamps? No, staking it out. So it has that bold line on three sides, and that means that the surveyor determined your property line in those areas, but they did not determine a property line down by the brook. And so it's left uh, it's up to the imagination. It's incomplete, right? That's yeah. better. So yeah. do you know why that wasn't? Is did he, Did they just not have enough time? Are they coming back? Um, I don't know. I did call um, and spoke to them because they did not stake the property. So I know that they came back and they staked it. But because I'm not familiar with these type of plans, um, I thought it was okay because I gave him exactly what was asked for on that enforcement order. I gave them uh, exactly that list. And I said, this is what, what I need. And uh, and then this is what they gave me. Yeah, so it's- uh, uh, Yeah, so it looks like it's incomplete. incomplete. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're just looking for that that bottom line then against uh, against yeah. Brook, correct? Yeah, they, they've shown four, uh, they've shown three of your four property boundaries and they need to right. sh sh show the fourth to make it complete. Okay, so. okay. I'll, go, I'll go back to them and, and I'll go actually into the office. So they can I can discuss with them. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All right. So uh, we should probably get that back. So that's taken care. Of. What about the um, what about the vegetation, um, David? Is that uh, I don't know. I've I've kind of lost track of 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 that part. Is that something that um, we should wait? In your opinion, for them to find a consultant, or is it? Uh, put a date on it and and have them come up with, you know, some sort of plan for us to make some comments on. And that's, yeah, David. Well, I think that if my re recollection is they've got to figure out where the BLSF is and the compensatory flood storage is. So the I, I, is the 100-year floodplain even shown on the survey plan, the Rober survey for 66 I thought I thought okay. David uh, David Morgan said yes it was. It's okay, sorry, say, I just but... I, I couldn't see it. Yeah, or I don't remember already. Because uh, I think that's the first thing. Because you can't you've got to do digging first before you figure out where your planting is. I think was the idea. Right, and the removal of the fill is going to be a pretty significant job. So, yeah, so I think maybe focus on the floodplain compensation first, and then we can focus on planting, or give, that will give some time for developing a planting plan. Yeah. And in which case, I can work with both parties to show where those boundaries are for the BLSF and describe the amount of 
BLSF, well, comp compensatory flood storage that will need to be calculated in order to arrive at that part of the plan. Okay, and is three weeks between now and November 7th enough time to get all this done? That'll depend on Davy Resource Group and whether um, that's who um, Evelyn has contracted. Uh, Patty Burns, I think is her name, whether Patty gets back in touch and or if they choose to use another vendor. I would think we should. I guess we'll try. Uh, you know, I, I think they're aware that there's an enforcement order. Maybe that just needs to be pressed upon the contractor a little bit more. Okay, so we, it sounds like we should continue the or extend the enforcement order to November 7th um, with direction to uh, complete the survey plan with the property line and making sure that the 100-year flood zone is on it and it's compatible with the enforcement order and all those lists. But work with David Morgan on that. Um, Could you repeat the three things that we're changing the enforcement order so we're – Complete the serve the sixty six R Dudley survey to show the 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 line on the bottom. We also requested a stamped survey from the condo association, which we didn't get. Or do you not asking for that? We need one at some point, but I don't know if it needs to be a part of this working copy. They should they should get one. It's it's if I paid for one of these, I would want a stamp plan. So at some point, we're going to ask for a stamp plan. So it's fine to have that as one of the requests. Okay, so there's two requests there. And what were the other ones? I, I, I don't. Again, we haven't reviewed the plan. I just think if the, it is to complete the plan per the per the list. Make sure all those items are on the plan because it's missing some. Mm -hmm. As an example, the you know, the property line, the all the uh, delineations. Okay. I think. So I think we just have to revise the date for them to complete a, to file a complete plan. I would think that's all we need to do with the enforcement okay. order. Okay. Not, not rehash. I, okay. I'm just trying to make it, make it simple, yeah. simpler. Sure. Um, yeah. I, I'd like to just change the date and have them work with David again, and then we can direct David. Um, me and Susan can, you know, we typically have a couple meetings in between our conservation meetings and just make sure that this is on the top of the list. So if with that, if I could get a motion to continue uh, to amend the enforcement order um, to um, come back on the conservation meeting on November 7th, 2024 uh, with a completed plan. This is both parties. And I um, have a second. Sorry. <laughs> That's good. No, I'm good. Second. Mike Gildas game. Susan Chapnick. Yes. David White. Yes. David Kaplan. Yes. Brian McBride. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. Mike Gildas game. Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. Okay. Come back on November 7th with a completed survey and work with David. Um, on that list that's in the existing order uh, enforcement order. Okay, that's good. I see no questions from Evelyn or I forgot the other guy's name, but it was uh, Franco. Jennifer Devaney. And Franco. Did, yep. Yeah, and Franco. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Thank you and uh, our next one is a uh, another enforcement order for 335 Mystic Street, an enforcement order. Uh, we need to ratify this enforcement order. The Conservation Commission is aware of some tree clearing in the aura. And also under the WPA, that would be the 100-foot uh, buffer zone, as shown on the MLS listing. David Morgan um, would ask us to ratify the enforcement order. And can you bring the commission up to date on this quickly? We don't need to take a half hour on this, I hope. We sent the enforcement order certified mail, got the return receipt. Um, I know that the property owners in receipt of the enforcement order 
I haven't received any correspondence yet. So if anybody hears from 335 Mystic or representing the homeowner there, chime in, raise a hand, turn on video. Yeah. So my plan then is to, to follow up uh, with the owner and make sure that uh, she's aware of the 11-7 meeting and in attendance. Yeah, David, and uh, we discussed at our meeting, uh, this is the chair's meeting to, uh, and you said you had been doing this, but to uh, send a copy of the enforcement order to the listing agent. And oh. did that happen? I, I had a phone conversation with them, but I haven't sent formal paperwork, like a copy of this. I might have emailed it uh, previously, and I can double check that I had done that. But um, are you asking for it to be sent certified? Uh, no, I, I'm, I don't think so. I think just emailing and whatnot. I just want to make sure that we have a record that that has been sent to them. Uh, and I think email would be fine and in oh, and a hard copy too. I don't, don't. So uh, we're trying to work on a site visit, not, not let this go. And you have two people to talk to you, you have the owner and you have the listing agent. I think you should be able to make some headway between those two and get a site visit out there at some point. Yes, before the next meeting for certain. Okay. And okay. So what do, it was just to show up at the meeting. Was that the issue? Was that the what we ordered? Yeah. What is the so the enforcement order was not put on the Novus agenda? Could you please um put that up on the screen for us to see? So if we're ratifying it, we know what we're voting on. Yeah, it's in the Google Drive, but yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, but, I was get nervous. No, no, you're right. I mean, the public should be able to see it. So okay. Um, so, ask for a restoration plan should be filed by the tenth, the ninth of October. Apparently, that did not happen. So, but we first need to. I'll make a motion to ratify this enforcement order issued by David on whatever date he was signed it. Does someone want to second the motion? I'll second. Yeah. Thanks. All right. So ratify. So ratify. Do you want to add any conditions, or does that come next? No. Let's let's uh, ratify it first, and then if we can discuss about amending it. Okay. Um, Susan Chapnick. Yes. Mike Gildas Game. Yes. David White. Yes. Brian McBride. Yes. David Kaplan. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. Okay. And okay, so now we are there any additional conditions needed on this uh, on this site? Did you get a chance to read what's on there? Do you want to add anything? I think it would be important to uh, contact the agent, um, David Morgan, and set up a site visit. I don't know how we could tie in. Well, we can't. You can't. Not you can't. Or you can't order a site visit. Um, but you to, we're requesting a site visit, so that would go in the cover letter to the EO. But I would vote to amend the order that the uh, owner attend or representative attend the November seventh meeting, and that they file a restoration plan by. November, I think you say November 1st. So David and David can get it out to us in time. Okay. Um, and again, put in the, uh, the letter that we're requesting a site visit and should be able to see if those things happen. All right. So we have some additional conditions. Any others? Oh, 335 Mystic Street. Seeing none, can I get a motion to accept those and add them to the enforcement order and send it out? Sorry, yeah, I'll make a motion to amend to amend the enforcement order of those items. Can I get a second? I'll second it. Wait. So Susan Chapnick? Yes. Mike Gildas game? 
Yes. David Kaplan. Yes. Brian McBride. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. David White. Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. All right. I'm sorry, just one comment for David Morgan. When he's contacting the real estate agent again, you might remind them that due to a recent um, Supreme Judicial Court case in Massachusetts, that once the property exchanges hands, we have another three years to bring enforcement. So he might want to avoid an unpleasant surprise by any buyer. And we can't tell the real estate agent what to do, but we can say that there might be an unpleasant surprise if prospective buyers are not aware of this uh, enforcement order and leave it at that. Yeah, and I think that's that's the reason why we have David reaching out to the realtor because we don't want them to be able to say that they knew nothing about it. Right, right. So it's planned to get them involved. Yeah. And, and we do have a history of enforcement with this property and this particular property owner that goes way back, but I won't recite that now. Sure. Okay. Um, moving right along. Enforcement order number three, 40 Park Ave, 1293, 1305 Massachusetts Avenue. Uh, the Conservation Commission is expected to continue uh, discussion on this matter to the November 7th 2024 Conservation Commission meeting. David, can you bring the commission up to date on this enforcement order? Property next to the old Gold's Gym that was a dry cleaner previously. Now it's a uh, some kind of CrossFit gym, maybe. Um, clear cut. I forget the square footage, but it's the number's around 75 trees right oh. down at the banks of Millbrook. Um, Many of those trees are multi stems. We're, we're counting stems uh, in that total. But at any rate, um, they are aware of the issue. I had a site meeting with them during which they handed me a letter requesting to continue to the 7th of November because the property owner is in Vietnam, some such place right now. So um, this is the the context and everything that has transpired between, I suppose it's worth noting that they have designs on making improvements to the property that we discussed. They would like to seek a notice of intent in the future. Naturally the first order of business is the enforcement issue, but um, you know, this was essentially their opening salvo in a larger project okay so we need to ratify the enforcement order for 40 park ave and 1293 1305 massachusetts avenue chuck oh, may, again can i see it post put up on the screen for the public and myself who didn't look at google drive it's not on novus thing must have gone wrong with novus because i they only it only put up the 40, at least when I click on it, it only put up the the um enforcement order for the oh maybe the 40 park ev is here and the other one isn't. Wait a minute. Let me just check. Hold on. No, nope, the 40 park ev came up. Sorry. So it is in the public record. All right. Good. Um, but you still like to see it, right? I Susan. Like it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so we're ordering the property owner shall take the following actions, install 12-inch biodegradable mulch sock for erosion control at the low, low point of the site along the bank of Mill Brook, ensure a sock is maintained and in good condition through April of next year. Property owner shall attend the October 17th meeting of the commission to discuss, and I think you also ordered a restoration plan be filed by the 9th of October. So has the silt sock been installed? Yeah, silt sock is installed. It was 3,100 square feet, including floodway room, front area, buffer zone, and aura. I had also noted that the building drainage is going directly into Mill Brook, which is a violation of itself. So that's a separate issue. 
um, and just as Nathaniel summarized here is the information about the filing and signed. I'll make a motion to ratify the enforcement order. Awesome. Need a second. David White. Mike Gildas game. Yes. Susan Chapnick. Yes. David Kaplan. Yes. Brian McBride. Yes. Daniel Stevens. Yes. And David White. Yes. Chuck Cerrone says yes. And who was the second? Uh, Nathaniel Stevens and David White. Thank you. There are two separate enforcement orders because the activity happened on two properties. Obviously, the Mass Ave one is the second enforcement order. Oh, okay. Yeah, I made the motion for Park Ave. Okay. This one is 1293 to 1305. 1305. Next, give you the update on those property owners as well. I've been contacted by um, both uh, Vincent Banoff and Steve D'Agostino, Sam D'Agostino, sorry, um, of PNB Realty, who were unaware of the activity, did not authorize it, are in the know that this has been done many years ago by the same property owner, um, also affecting their property at the time. And so um, they're going to be reliant on uh, the owner of 40 Park Ave to fulfill the requirements of the enforcement order. But that's uh, still open for ratification and included the same details as the first one. We'll make a motion to ratify the enforcement order for what's the address again? Twelve ninety to thirteen oh five Mass Ave. Can I get a second? Second. Second. David White. Uh, Mike Gildas game. Yes. Susan Chapnick. Yes. David Kaplan. Yes. Brian McBride. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. And David White. Yes. And Chuck Taroni. Chuck Taroni says yes. Okay, that's ratified. Um, obviously, they're both coming back to the November 7th meeting, and those need to be updated. Yeah, so I'll make a motion to amend both enforcement orders to update the uh, to appear at the November 7th meeting is when we want yep. them. I think it says that um, already. I'm no? sorry? N no. It doesn't? No. They were going to come to tonight's meeting, right? Let's see. It didn't say to attend the meeting, actually. Oh, okay. Uh, so I would say in order to attend the meeting and to file a restoration plan by November 1st. Okay. Restoration plan. So amend the date of the restoration plan and add a requirement to attend the November 4th, the uh, November 7th meeting. Um, yeah, so I think amend the, the date guys... of the restoration plan to November 1st. Is that what you said, Nathaniel? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. And then attend the meeting. Um, they say the owner's away, but we, we, um, we're we meeting remotely. The guy's gone for a month. It's I think it's a pretty serious violation. He can make arrangements to attend or send a representative. Yeah, uh, the... I'm, I'm not sympathetic to taking off to travel for... Um, even business travel for a month and not taking care of this. I'll second. Okay. Um, Mike Gildas. Did we have to do this twice again for both properties? To this vote? is for both. Okay. He made his oh, motion for both. I made a motion for both. Thank yeah. you. Got it. Thanks. Yes. Okay. So, so we got Daniel. I'm sorry. I'm I'm trying to take notes because I'm trying to be a good doobie. <laughs> Thanks. Yep. Yeah, I made the motion. I made the motion. I think David Kaplan seconded. Correct. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Sorry. And and Mike Gillis Game said yes. And yeah. Susan Chapnick. Yes. And David White. Yes. 
and Brian McBride. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. And David Kaplan. Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. Okay. Hmm. That was a lot. Okay. Any more enforcement orders? This is so much fun. Oh, we could get some headway on these enforcement orders. Um, moving right along, we have uh, a Water Bodies Working Group update from David Morgan. Uh, David White, sorry. Sorry, David. Okay. Um, there's been a post-treatment survey at Spy Pond with the results sometime in December. There's a harmful algae bloom at Hills Pond. I think it's still closed. Is that right, David? Okay. And the reservoir is going on much as before. The water level is down a bit. There's a bird walk on the 9th that we're invited to. That's pretty much what I have to say today. Right. Uh, I just, can I add one thing? Mm -hmm. The res is really down. I, I did a, a walk around it this past weekend. I've never seen it so low. But on the other hand, there were a lot of birds there. So I, I saw three great blue heron, and there was a great cormorant, which is usually a seabird. You never see them inland. Not the crest yeah. ones that we see, the great, <clears throat> really big one. It was amazing. There were birders there that with these huge telescopes saying, this is a list bird. This is a once in a lifetime. <laughs> yes, they were it's really excited. Great birding spot. Great birding yeah. spot. Yeah. Yeah. They must so go why there. Why is it so low, though? That was my question. They lower the water. Uh, so DEP just announced that we've been in a drought here mm -hmm. in the Northeast. Um, that might be one of the reasons. And I think the birds show up because uh, the dinner light is on. You just expose a lot more <laughs> little morsels there. <laughs> They're, basically, they lower the water in the fall for flood storage. Also, yep. the birders like the habitat. And they raise again in the summertime up to the level of the beach water level. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean all the water. Right, but it's super <laughs> uh, low. But the it's super so low part. It's it's, it's, it's below it's what it usually it's not, does. It's not its lowest, but it's pretty low. It, it is. I've never drought. seen it that low myself. Yeah, it's, It gets lower. Oh, hey, yeah. FYI, the Open Space Committee is sponsoring a bird walk in two weeks, if anyone's interested. In. Yes. Okay. On the ninth. Ninth, isn't it? Yeah. Thank That's you. Great. Okay. Uh, David, where do you meet for that bird walk? Right at the parking lot? Yes. At the... The res parking the lot. Ramp, at the ramp. The ramp. Okay. Anyone the wants ramp. to go to the bird walk on uh, November 9th? 8 Did I get that right? 8 a.m.? 8 a.m. At, at the boat ramp. Chris Floyd. He's great. Chris Floyd. Okay. Uh, moving right along, we have a tree committee update from Sarah Alfaro Franco. So I'm going to just do a, um, um, a, basically an update from the September 11th and October 9th meeting. Um, the, um, the um, as you probably know, the three committee participated in the Arlington's Environmental Summit on September 25th. They continue to reach out and engage the community to encourage them to take care of trees, water them, and uh, the warden keeps saying that although they keep asking people to protect the trees, the policing is the uh, real challenge uh, that they have. Um, the town has been very busy pruning, grinding stumps, planting, and watering. Um, the spotted lantern fly invest infestation has recently been confirmed in Mulberry in early October. Uh, this year, the infestation has been reported in several communities, uh, Framingham, Lawrence, Lynn, Marlboro, uh, Norton, and more. And they really warn people to keep an eye out for the lantern flies. Mm. Um, that's basically the next meeting is November 13th. All right, Sarah, thank you. Any questions from the commission? Seeing none, moving right along, we have a CPA committee update from uh, Brian McBride. Yeah, so there actually is some news this time. Uh, that first uh, preliminary round of CPA applications, uh, we, we've collected the uh, applications. There's uh, 12 or so of them, totaling about $3 million. 
which is maybe half a million dollars than we uh, spent last year. So some of some trims would have to be made. Uh, there'll be, there's a meeting next Wednesday. I believe it's a public meeting, although I haven't seen a notice of it yet, but it, the CPA committee is certainly a meeting. Um, and roughly split between housing, um, preservation, and open space recreation. A uh, million dollars a piece approximately is, has been requested. Um, in terms of yeah, the, the open space and recreation may be the most relevant. Uh, David's got two in there, so the Public Lands Tree Survey and the Urban Wilds Initiative um, for like $100,000 between those two. And then two pretty big park projects, uh, a skate park upgrade and expansion at McLennan, and then a big McLennan um, community garden. And those two together are about a million dollars. Um, I, I think I, I sent the... Uh, a summary of this to Chuck and Susan and David. I wasn't sure about the open reading stuff, whether to post it or what have you, but um, maybe Chuck, you can give me some advice if folks want to see all the details. I'm happy just, to share. Just send uh, any any time that comes up. Just send everything to David. David can make that decision, and of course, all that what you've talked about can be posted. Okay. I Sounds have good. a quick question about McLennan. Um, the community garden do you do you know where where that location was going to be at McLean? yeah i do have the application susan i looked at it and i couldn't quite make out where i don't know if david happens to know where it is on the property because i just saw it like uh, the reason i'm concerned ago. is because we've had other community gardens in the town that were proposed on jurisdictional areas and i want to make sure it doesn't uh, get too far before we get a view if that is the case i don't know i don't know anything about it Great. Why don't I look into the location, maybe talk with David and you and find out if that looks like a... a Great, flag. and then you can give us an update. That would be awesome. Sounds, Thank you. Good. Sure. Who, it, so the uh, it's the park and rec that's uh, proposing the community garden? Yes. So they, they would be running that. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of places down at uh, McClellan, but as Susan knows... <laughs> It's only going to go right into the buffer zone. So um, you know, at least we'll, we think that's where it's going. All right. So I was at the um, – uh, I didn't want to jump on anything here. Did, uh, Brian, are you all set there? And Can we move I'm, on? I'm all set unless anyone okay. has any questions. Yep. Great. So uh, I was at the Park and Recreation Committee meeting. Um, and, oh, the date escapes me. I think it was the uh, 24th of last month and um so yeah september 24th uh, and the recreation committee uh and so the main thing that i was there for is that they're resurrecting the poet's corner um orad so they they do want to have that finalized they have to reach out to the church and get permission um, they're going to go with the same um, the same company that did it for Belmont Hill, and so there's probably some cost savings there. But it's it's not complete yet. As my recollection was, we were about to hear from them and bring up some points, but uh, it never came to the commission for discussion. Is that an ANRAD or an, what did you say? Uh, order of resource area delineation. It's an ORAD. ORAD. What is the difference between that and an ANRAD? Or am I the just an, the ANRAD is the application for for oh. an ORAD? Got it. <laughs> it's the right. approval. It's the Got approval. It. Yeah, Got but right? Chuck didn't didn't they didn't they they filed the ANRAD and then withdrew it, right? Right. They never did any work on it yeah. as far as I know, so I don't know yeah, what. I think we were getting by. ready to hire a consultant and then they withdrew. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's right. So maybe the the word is resurrect was wrong. They're going back into the process. They're going to delineate. They're going to they're going to um, they're going to stake that line, and they're going to get it approved by the conservation commission. We should see this in the near future. I don't believe they will anything. have it reviewed by the conservation commission. Right. We can't just approve it, Nilly. Willy Unless you've already decided. You guys so. are so good. I'm so glad both of you are, are at these meetings. Yeah, and too. actually, I think you're, I think you are. <laughs> just a heads up, I would I would I would request a period. What would we do with both? What so what Maybe. would you request? We'll I didn't hear that. What's your request? I said I might request a peer review when that comes through. We'll see. I'm just yeah, I, I don't know what we're supposed to do with information there. tonight. Uh I, I, I yeah. believe you should probably see it first, but yeah. uh let's see. Okay. So, anyways, um, 
I don't know what the time frame is or, um, you know, or anything else about it other than that they're determined to, um, you know, find out what's possible out there. And you can't really do that until you understand where the wetland line is, because after that, you can place all your jurisdictional setbacks and figure out where things work and don't work. So I support the fact that they're going out and at least doing this first step. Um, let's see that they bring it to the Conservation Commission. And as uh, uh, Nathaniel is correct, it's an ANRAD. And um, we'll see that soon, I guess. But I don't know. I have no uh, time frame. Park next. and Rec is next on the 22nd, next mm -hmm. Tuesday. So I think Susan or I are up to attend that meeting. That's right. Susan, what's your pleasure? I can't remember. I think, did you go? I think I went before Chuck. I was just looking back. I think you went before Chuck and you never reported, Nathaniel, because no, we, so we didn't have, we didn't have a, canceled meeting. a meeting. So you need to report. And I think it's <laughs> my turn on the 22nd. Okay. That sounds yeah. fine with yeah. me. That's fair enough. Yeah. If I can remember back to the meeting, I was just looking up their meetings. I to, think you to... had the meeting before Chuck. Yeah, I did. Okay. So okay. whatever that meeting was, I think it was maybe the I think it was right after Labor Day, so maybe two weeks before or a week week before. So at that meeting, the main item was uh, someone was making a request to do some plantings at the Crusher lot. So there's a fair amount of discussion there. There was some discussion about the land stewards program. I think the Park and Rec uh, has a sort of a different view of it than the Conservation Commission does. So I shared some thoughts with David Morgan about that. Uh, and and I, I think it just reflects the, the two different approaches that the, the two different uh, committees, commissions have about how they manage their respective lands. We're a little more hands-off, passive, well, some might say negligent in some regards, but I'd like to say passive. Um, and we have, and we, frankly, we have fewer activities that need to be balanced. I mean, that's our objective statement, I think, than the Park and Rec does. So they... It's. I think it's a little more challenging for them to coordinate with the land stewards group as much as I'm sure they appreciate the people's uh, interest in caring for these open spaces. So that was really about it. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't a, a meeting with heavy agenda, and I don't think that there's really anything else that pertained to conservation commission. Yeah, for, for me, Nathaniel, it, it, I know we talked a little bit. It does bring up the question about how we manage as a town these open spaces and natural spaces. And I, I really like what David's doing in terms of these surveys and mapping out um, concepts about preservation of natural habitat. Um, Poets Corner maybe falls in under this umbrella, too. Uh, and there do seem to be different ideas about <laughs> what the best approach is for remaining natural habitat. Yeah, and I think also it's hard. I think it, it, I don't know that the, the meeting at, uh, at Park and Rec really did remind me that there, you know, open space is such a broad term. Mm. You know, in my mind, open space could include the the cemetery. It includes yeah. you know, um, Menominee Rocks Park or McLennan Park, and it includes our Window on the Mystic or Meadowbrook Park. I mean, just think of those lands; how different they are. Conservation mm. land. We just have. There's not any benches. There's no. There's rarely any paths. There's a lot of vegetation. People who only people who use that maybe are people just walking through, looking at wildlife, or wanting to have, seek some solitude. Whereas compare that to McLennan Park, where you have you want two or three sports fields, you have people running around, you have a playground area. I mean, there's just the compete the number of users and user groups that the Park and Rec has to balance. Uh, for their uses is really a, a whole different challenge than we have. And certainly the cemetery has, you know, I guess we can make a couple of jokes about how people use the cemetery, but mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's, it's different from, from the conservation commission, and the park and rec commission. So I, I, I agree. I agree with you, Brian. It does raise the issue about maintaining and, and um, you know, the larger issue about maintaining all this land. But I think it's, it's also important to remember that these different lands are, really uh they're used differently and they're under different jurisdictions and different laws so there is some commonality but there's also some important differences to keep in mind do you think there's a better way of us coordinating with park and rec in terms of volunteer 
um, res, you know, residents or community members that want to volunteer to, you know, remove invasives, do planting, et cetera. So, so it brings to mind McLennan, since you mentioned that, which has lots of different uses. And one of it is, is the, the, the nice areas you can walk through and kind of be mm. in nature. That's and cool. um and and there we have done planting volunteer planting activities and removing invasives um with the blessing of park and rec so i guess i don't understand why i think it's, it's important to time get not other time yeah, yeah i think it's important just to get to remind people that they need to get the blessing of park and rec because it is ultimately park and rec's land uh to do that and i think it's just important to check with the park and rec person we have a new director of the Acting director, I believe, is now the new park and rec Natasha, director. Yeah, right? Natasha Wayden. She's she's the director. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I think just coordinating, and then she decides whether to bring it to the full full commission. But I think just you know, coordinating with them mm -hmm. about that, and reminding them that the part that they they would like to be involved and consulted and get permission, um, mm -hmm. especially especially so if it's an idea that maybe it's originating with the conservation commission or someone's approaching us first because we were more of the umbrella organization or the leaders for the con for the land stewards program in general but right. i think it's just coordinating being sure to coordinate explicitly with park and rec mm -hmm. and also the other lesson with that meeting was to really come with a concrete proposal mm -hmm. not just a not just an email that says two or three words but especially with park and rec you've got to be very specific about where you know come with a come with a plan showing exactly where you're going to be doing the work and the specs and stuff like that, because there was a fair amount of time I felt discussing where is this exactly, you know, blah, 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 you know, how many entrances are there there and things like that. So I think in many instances, I could have sped things up if it was a more concrete application. And I think the new Park and Rec Commission, uh, uh, Park and Rec Director understood that and will urge people coming next time to include those that information thank you all right so uh nathaniel oh, i hope david you're... white has his hand up. oh david yes. said, the reservoir committee has relationships with park and rec we always consult with them on our native plan activities so is a precedent there for um operation mm. good so it's possible is that what you're saying yes okay great all right, so Nathaniel, I hope you're ready uh, because we're Sims uh, Sims conservation restriction update uh, mm -hmm. reached out to you this afternoon, um, yeah. and so if you can just update us, this is something that we've added to our discussions agenda just to keep in touch. I think we're changing management over there, and I just wanted to make sure that we're uh, keeping up to date on uh, the actions that are happening in this area because sure. it has, does seem to take a long time, right? It's been out it there has. for a while. It yeah. has. So people may remember that the applicants were before us almost a year ago, I think, on the forestry management plan. We discussed that. They had their expert, their forester consultant, Dan Cathcart, I believe. I can't remember his firm's name, was uh, here. We provided comments. So that has been in progress. But the main focus over the past almost year has been the property owner and management company hired Beals and Thomas, as, as people might remember, to survey, survey the encroachments and then identify the encroachments. Uh, Chris Like, who is the president of the Arlington Land Trust, and I have been meeting with David LaPointe from Beals and Thomas almost monthly, if not more. And the slow progress in terms of reaching out to people, you know, he sent me. First of all, we went through the encroachments and really prioritized some it prioritized the order and really, you know, which are most, most egregious, which are less egregious, and then some that as a practical matter might be difficult to address. For instance, it looked like that say a house was built in the 1980s, which has a slope driveway into it. And it's mostly vegetated anyways. So it's technically an encroachment, but it would be much more disruptive to to fix that. So that's just one example. But David's David's in the, at the point where he has contacted a number of people. There's a maybe a handful of people he, he has not been able to reach at all. He's had no response, uh, and so we're at the point where the pro the property owner TA Realty requested 
uh, I got the request just today that we have a meeting, uh, uh, Chris Like and I and Dave LaPointe and the property owners meet to regroup and see how we're going to approach the encroachments, approach the people, how are we going to deal with the people who haven't responded? And then how do we, res how do we deal with the people who have responded and said, okay, yeah, that's an encroachment there. It's up to you to clean it. You know, I'm fine with you moving it. And there's a subset of people who also said, oh, I'm sorry about that. I'll move that encroachment. And we've just got to follow up on that. So that's the encroachment aspect of it. And then they also wanted to meet to discuss the forest management plan on that, which in my mind is straightforward because we had already provided comments a year ago. So I'm sort of waiting for them to come to address that, but they've requested a meeting. That meeting's scheduled for an, in another two weeks, I think, or we're still in the process of scheduling that. So that's the update. We're trying slowly, it's making slow, we're making progress, of course, slower than we all hope, but at least it's, it's certainly made more progress than we have in the past three or four years, so. So Nathaniel, I didn't even know that the letters actually ever went out. So they did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Responses, yes. Which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All we right. did get some responses. Yeah. And we're okay. just trying to figure out how to contact the other people. Got it. Because they sent the mail, out, certified <clears throat> mail, I think first. And then the second time we just sent them, uh, uh, Beals and Thomas sent them by regular mail or he dropped them off at uh, actually with physically at people's in, in their mailboxes. Or and at their front doors. So. Thank you, um, Daniel. I, I wasn't quite clear on that. There was that fabulous forestry plan a year ago or so, where they were yes. identifying the trees. Do, do you have a sense that they're still committed? The new owners are committed to executing on that, or is that up in the air now? Well, we had, if you remember, I think the ball is in their court to incorporate and discuss the comments that the Conservation Commission formulated at a public meeting, and David put it in a memorandum, and we sent that memo to them. And we had been, frankly, as I, I sort of dropped the ball because we'd been focused so much on the encroachments in the past six months or so. And then I finally brought it up to them three or four months ago and said, what's the, you know, what, what's the scoop? When are we going to get the next draft of the forest management plan? But I think that they seem still committed to it, but I think they just need to be reminded again. Let's move that along, yes. Thanks. Any more questions or comments for Nathaniel? Okay. Thank you, Nathaniel. That was, uh, that's going to be a good update every other week moving sure. forward. Thanks. Yeah. Um, all right. So we're at our hearings. Uh, but before we open the hearings, I just wanted to let everyone know that Thorndike Place has been continued to October 24th. And uh, that October 24th meeting is a special meeting. And there will only be one item on the agenda, and that's Thorndike Place. So it'll start at 7 o'clock. And um, it's and uh, I'll start at seven o'clock, and it will just go on just like a regular meeting. But there'll be no other things discussed other than the topic of Thorndike Place. If you're looking for any of the latest correspondence, you can find that on the Thorndike Place website, or reach out to David Morgan if you're having trouble, and he'll help you. Um, he'll help you with that. Now, moving on to our hearings. Uh, first hearing tonight is. Get my papers ready. Uh, request for determination of applicability for 37 Beverly Road. The Arlington Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing to consider a request for determination of applicability under the Wetlands Protection Act and the Arlington Bylaw for Wetlands Protection for installing a permanent dock at 37 Beverly Road. The applicant uh, is proposing to build a three foot by 10 foot ramp and a 10 foot by 16 foot permanent floating dock. The three foot by 10 foot ramp will be anchored to an existing deck that extends to the high water line on the Mystic Lake. A site visit was conducted on October 16th, 2024, attended by Susan Chapnick, David Morgan, and myself. Um, and I will actually start out and give a summary, and then you guys can chime in if I've missed anything. Um, uh, so we walked, um, we knocked on the door, uh, we met the owner, we walked down to the dock, um, the existing dock, 
approximately 10 by 12. Uh, the deck, I said uh, dock, we walked down to the existing deck. And that deck is ex uh, approximately 10 by 12 feet. The deck sits on the high water mark uh, and extends up gradient, approximately 10 feet. The deck is framed as relatively new, but was built on top of an old uh, cinder block foundation that looks like it's been there for 20 years or so. There was no beach and vegetation, but there was vegetation on either side of the existing deck. The lakefront was, environmentally speaking, in very good condition. If uh, David and Susan has anything else to add to that, uh, you can right now, or I'll turn it over to the applicant. Seeing nothing, I'm, I'm going- I'm with turning it over. Yeah, Sure. <laughs> any, any pictures by any chance? Yeah, yeah hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> so, uh, so we did meet uh, the applicant at his house and he was gracious enough to uh, take us in and talk to us and show us the plans on his computer. Can you introduce yourself right now and walk through your presentation? And like I said, introduce yourself for the record, please. Uh, yes, my name is uh, Eric Glenn Weil. Uh, I live at 37 Beverly. Uh, I moved here approximately six months ago um, and uh, Chuck did a good job of uh, summarizing the plan, but I've got a presentation with a few more details and some pictures uh, to help orient folks. So can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. It's gonna pop up, there it goes. Um, is anyone here uh, hard of hearing? I can put subtitles in if that's helpful. No, you, why don't you do that anyways? That would be okay. great. Hold on. Uh, ah, I said not letting me do this. <laughs> hmm. Oh. Uh, don't worry about not, title not, seven. Yeah, yeah no. not necessarily. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, below slide. The bottom overlay. There we go. Okay. Uh, hopefully this will work. What is going on? Also having okay. Here we go. Trebles was sharing screen. It is a full moon. I swear. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so can if can everyone see this picture? Yes. Okay, great. So this is a view from the house down over the property that gives you an overall sense for it. Um, we're proposing. I think Chuck already gave the overall summary. Um, the existing setting, uh, Chuck described well, but this gives you a picture of it, uh, both with a little bit more zoom out so you see the vegetation and a little more zoom in so you see the shape of the deck. Um, my understanding from the owner, which is maybe a slight contrast to what uh, Chuck said, but I, I, I would have to verify this for sure, is that the two level platform was built during the 1990s um, at which time the lake irrigation pump was also installed and that the platform foundation was from the 1940s. Um, uh, Chuck already said this about vegetation. Um, the only um, interface between the dock and the shoreline would be the attachment of the game plate to the pre-existing platform. There would be no additional reinforcement. Um, this is what the dock would look like. Uh, it's a floating dock with mahogany finish, 16 feet wide by 10 feet deep. There would be two stabilizing non-load bearing thin steel pipes on either side of the dock to stabilize it. Um, the uh, access would be via this gang plank, uh, which Chuck characterized appropriately. Um, there would be a small aluminum swim ladder attached. All the other metal is stainless steel. Uh, the dock would not be seasonable, but it would be designed to bear, uh, you know, normal weather conditions, including snow and ice. Upon a full freezing of the lake, uh, heat, they would recommend attaching to the uh, pump outlet inside of here a, 
uh, ice reduction uh, electrical connection, which he said is possible. But they said that that is at this point, given climatic changes, like a once in a hundred year event, um, he thought so, uh, but you would know better than them. Um, the installation would all be components that are modular and would be carried down uh, the access path and installed by hand with no equipment brought uh, to the uh, lakeside. Um, we would use it, as you can see here, for paddling, uh, human-powered boats, We it may be some swimming. We do not intend any motors uh, or sail-based uh, usage. So that's basically the idea. All right. Uh, turn it back to the commission for any questions or comments. Yes, uh, just it's Mike here. I uh, just have a quick question. I wasn't, uh, I don't recall what the pump is for. The, the pump is to irrigate the property. It has not, it's unrelated to this project, but it is pre existing and we've not done anything to alter that, except that there was a small <clears throat> hole that apparently uh, opened up in the pipe and was letting out some, uh, uh, you know, air and liquid, and that was patched, but that's the only thing that we've done to the pump. Um, and it's been there, I think, since the 90s. Any other questions? Question. Sure. Yeah, just, sorry, just to clarify. So this is not a seasonal dock. This is, you're proposing a permanent dock, it sounds like? Mm. That's correct. Yeah, that's um, if you look at the property, uh, just given sort of the small area around the deck, and the sharp grade removal and storage is a challenge. Um, so they recommended uh, a a permanent structure, a permanent floating structure. Okay, because I think we have required other people. I can't remember if it's on this lake or the other or, or the other Mystic Lake to remove. We have conditions about them removing their floating docks in the winter season. Um, I mean, if that is important or desired, I can certainly look into that. Um, but uh, that was not the recommendation of the contractor, but I can come back to them with feedback on that. Okay. Yeah, I just has it. Yeah, I hesitate to leave docks in, especially. I mean, I. I think it's less of an issue now, as you say, because the the pond rarely freezes over these days. But in the past, generally, <clears throat> my knowledge of the science is using these de-icers de around the docks is not healthy for the ecosystem because oh, I part of the part of the natural cycle of a pond of a body of water, and again, this is, maybe applies to deeper bodies of water, is that they depend on the freeze over uh, just as part of their their natural natural ecological cycles and that's disrupted with these these dock de-icers. But again, I think it's probably less of a concern here in this pond than it is uh, for the ponds in more northern New England that I'm uh, and lakes that I'm familiar with. Yeah, his, his attitude was that south of the New Hampshire border, you know, that would not be a focus when he gets further north. He said that that's right. an issue that they come up against they're actually from maine so they can okay. really deal with context where that is an issue but they said that south of the new hampshire border he would not that would not be a primary concern but again if it's a concern for you i'm happy to go back to him and make that suggestion it is a bit challenging as i mentioned right given the grade and the area around it to do that but you know, if that's important, we're certainly open to bringing that as feedback back to them and reconsidering. Thanks. I, I appreciate your your openness. Let's just see what the other if the other commissioners uh, agree or, or I'm the outlier on this, which is fine. So I, I was unsure if it was Brian or Susan. So let us know who raised their hand first. I Susan. think I did, but that's OK. I just wanted to um clarify a few things, Nathaniel, we, we have conditioned um, taking docs out, 
but that was also because the um, applicants proposed temporary docs. So okay. they were getting their dock licenses um, as temporary licenses. And that said, then we had times when they had to remove the dock and they couldn't put it in till a certain time um, in the lake and then had to remove it by November, I think in an April or something and then remove it in November. So we had those conditions because they specifically wrote an RDA Right. Or a temporary doc and, and are getting that license from the state. So if this is a permanent doc, and we I don't think I've seen one on my 10 years on the commission, but I do agree with climate change. I don't think Mystic Lake freezes anymore, <laughs> but I haven't seen it. Um, even Spy Pond doesn't freeze a, a lot anymore like it used to. So he, you know, and and given that he got the the advice from a company in Maine, I, I tend to, to thinking that's probably okay. I do agree with you that I don't like the idea of de-icing. I think it does change the environment when you start changing temperature. So it's not just putting chemicals in a water. I know you're not doing that, but even temperature actually changes the ecology um, for cold water organisms. So so I'm, I'm not I'm not happy about that. And if we had, if we go on to say, you know, uh, approve this project, you know, uh, it does have jurisdiction, but but we're not requiring an NOI, then then I would put a condition in that that we couldn't, you couldn't do that. Um, that's that's just my two cents. Having been on the site, it is very steep. All of these um, properties that go down to Mystic Lake are are immensely steep. Right. Yeah, which I'm is definitely very I'm remembering that now. Yeah, yeah. And the one that we had a challenge with is just next door, the jet ski one. If you remember that mm. one, it's just right there. So it is a challenging site, and maybe a permanent deck would be, you know, a better idea for them. And I think it's not going to impair the environment. Um, it's not putting any physical things into the water body, really, except for those tiny little poles. Their um, advice to us was that if we didn't, you know, use any de-icing thing, which it sounds like we shouldn't, that in the like roughly at this point, one in a hundred years, and that's at the current environmental state. So it might even end up even never less happening, than, you know, never happening at all. But mm -hmm. if that did happen, you know, there would be damage to the site, uh, you know, to the deck, to the dock. Uh, it it wouldn't likely be completely destroyed, but it would be damaged um, potentially. But also mm -hmm. said that given the size of the lake, the amount of damage is probably not that great because basically he said that the amount of sort of expected drift that's created by the ice is proportional to the lake size. So it's really when you have a very large lake that freezes over that you should expect enough drift to make a big difference. He said he's not even sure if there were a full freeze, whether it would do enough damage to actually require repair or just to sort of jiggle it around a little bit. So he didn't, I mean, again, I don't know anything about this, but that was his opinion <laughs> was that he really wouldn't worry about it too much. So I'm not that concerned about a no de-icing condition. Thank you. Uh, David Kaplan. Yeah, I just had a question about you know, the mechanism for de-icing. Is it temperature? Or is it just agitation? My familiarity on my lake in New Hampshire, it's, it's just agitation. All right. The idea so, is to agitate it enough so it doesn't freeze. I just want to make sure because oh, that's you, fine you with guys, me, and I didn't understand that, David. That's you, a good. You guys point. almost certainly know better than I do about I, this, but yeah, I didn't. Know uh, but it, but it is something that requires electrical power. That's all he said. But I'm almost sure it didn't right. require chemicals. But I, I right, yeah, that's my understanding. It just it, agitates the water, right? Because if the moving water is harder to freeze, so it effectively lowers the the water the temperature. But right. So it sounded like Susan's concerns were the addition of like a thermal impact, like a temperature impact. So I, I would be less concerned if it's just agitation. Um, but, mm -hmm. you know, I, I guess the conversation is around, you know, does a permanent structure, does it benefit or does it impact um, the resource area values or is it de minimis? Is it 
is it shelter for fish? Um, is it, um, does it alter, you know, the light getting to the substrate? So I guess I'm a little bit unclear on whether or not to see this as, you know, um, it definitely alters and it definitely changes, but I'm not, not sure to what extent. Um, I mean, I, I don't necessarily think have a problem with a permanent deck in this location, but um, I, I wonder if the commission would be open to discussing some sort of mitigation or some sort of uh, resource area value improvement um, to offset maybe a potential damage a permanent structure would do in this location. Sure. Um, I'm just going to move on to Brian McBride and you yeah. can think about that question. Great. So I just want to confirm that there, there's no foundation or footing beneath the poles that stabilize the, the deck, right? The, the, just, the pole just somehow rests on the surface of the... No, the they probably bed. drive it in. They, that would okay. be driven in, right? Those poles that uh, are on either side of the dock, aren't they driven into the bottom of the of the lake, Glenn? Uh, Eric? Uh, <laughs> the, the, yeah, no, Glenn is, is right. Uh, um, I don't have complete certainty about that. Uh, I certainly could get it. Um, that was my assumption. Um, was I guess that's my, my, only, my only concern is, is, you know, is that a disruptive effect on the bottom of the pond? Are you digging things up and creating a lot of silt or harming some creature or what have you? Be interesting to know how that's executed. So I think at the uh, diagram, it showed a pretty like two inch pipe, three inch uh, pipe, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty small then. Yeah, maybe if if it's not the case, Glenn, if you find out there is some construction or there is some serious disruption with those poles, you could let us know. I, I have a full list of materials, so whatever it is, it would not include any additional materials that would go underneath. But how it attaches beyond the fact that there's no material, because they have a full list of all required materials, and it doesn't include anything that would be uh, at the bottom of those pipes. So. Beyond that, I'd have to investigate further. Okay. And my, Does my this stuff like the length? Sorry. Oh, Sorry, yeah. Sorry. I can get the length. Uh, hold on. The length, because it will give an idea of oh, yeah, yeah. If, if they're 100 feet long, then you could surmise <laughs> that you build in 20 yeah, feet. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And But Brian is hitting on something that I run into with the coastal dock projects is the, the, the methodology of how they're going to get those piles in, drive those piles in. And most commissions on the Cape specify I, I actually, drilling them in or pounding them in rather than uh, there's a jetting I, I, technique, which is very disruptive. So uh, I have I, a, I, I have a full answer for you. It actually says that the pipes are two inches in diameter and they are driven in by hand to refusal with no assistance from tools. That's what it says. So mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it sounds mildly. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. fine. The, the other question is maybe more for the commission. Like, what is the? Are we? Do we have any jurisdiction about people building docks into this lake? Can everyone build a dock into the lake? Is there any concern about restriction of movement of boats or crowding of the lake? I, I just don't. It seems like a, a issue separate from a conservation commission. But uh, I don't know if I, if anyone knows if there is such a regulation or if it falls outside our purview. Uh, yes, I'm painfully aware of that. This uh, yeah. program, the Chapter 91 <laughs> license program, I have two cases on it now. Which, okay. yeah, so you apply to, through. there is the, um, it's called the public tr trust doctrine. So as for great ponds and along the ocean, I'm trying to think about it, describe this briefly. Um, the right, the public has, as you say, the right to fish, fowl and navigate as you said, so DEP has a permitting program through chapter 91, which yeah. tries to balance the right of uh, property owners along water bodies to use their waterfront essentially and, and reach the water and balance that with the public's right to use the water as well. And so there's a variety of ways you can get permits like with the conservation commission. And I'd imagine this one, there might be, uh, they might apply for a small, uh, 
accessory dock, what is it? Was it uh, minor, minor permit, minor, minor chapter one uh, li license, or there's two or three other ways of getting permission from DEP through their waterways program, the chapter 91 program, but a prerequisite of applying for that chapter 91 license is to get a sign off from the conservation commission, either an order of conditions or a negative determination of applicability. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Nathaniel. More than you probably want to ever know. No, it's perfect. Yeah, it's great. I also wanted to let you know, I got an answer for you on the means of de-icing. So apparently I've looked on their website, they offer two alternatives. One is agitators, that's the most common. And the other option is something called a bubbler, which I don't fully understand, but it involves the release of air mm. uh, to agitate the ice. Neither involve changes in the thermal conditions. Right. I think the, bu the bubbling, although it's not heating the water, I think the bubbling sometimes might actually warm the water a little bit. I don't know. It's the I think it's the agitation and just bringing the water back up to the surface where it's warmer on the surface. Maybe get yeah. Sunlight, it, it, it says that it's, it's about water, circulation of the between the and the lower level, and not about yeah. changes in the overall thermal condition. But yeah. Do you know how many agitators are needed? I have absolutely no Glenn. idea. Yeah, no, I have no idea. I was if, I'm if just looking would... at things on their website in terms of the general things that they offer, but. I would think only one for this size dock, just judging from, again, my experience with lakes up north. So Nathaniel, did you have a, you started that conversation off being concerned about um, this and then it turned quickly into uh, heating an area around the dock. Are you concerned about agitation also? I, I, I am a little bit, but very much less so. I could go either way, I think, on this. So I think whatever, because again, I don't think it's going to, the, the bubblers will ever need to be turned on or it's going to be once in a 100 year occasion. And with climate change, probably turn into one in uh, you know, mm -hmm. 500, then one in 1,000. So very That frequently. might be a good condition to not turn the agitator on in November and turn it off in April. Mm -hmm. Mike? Yes, thanks. Uh, following on uh, David Kaplan's questions, the dock planks, are they separated? Is there a space between the planks to allow light through, or are they butted up against each other? A good question. Good question. I De don't. Deck, deck spacing. They talk about it, the spacing of the deck. I mean, my, my, hypo my guess would be that uh, there's a small space and that probably that's negotiable, but I don't really know. Uh, precisely. It will, it will probably stay, stay in your spec. Oh, well, okay, hold on. Yeah, because uh -huh. that can be sometimes important uh, to allow light through. Uh, I know it just talks about the size of the mahogany woods, but it doesn't talk about the spacing, I think. I'm looking at the proposal in your that you yeah your i don't know if there's sort of a standard spacing uh for these kinds of structures or not but i just raise the issue i mean i i think there's clearly going to be some kind of spacing and how much and i i that's something i don't understand i can definitely go on their website and see if there's more details for whatever their standard thing is i'm assuming they're just proposing the standard thing I also assume that they would probably be open to adjustments if if that's important. Um, but mm. uh, thanks. Okay. David Morgan. David Morgan, yeah. David's got his hand up. So Glenn, the idea is to match the surfacing of the dock to the existing deck. Is that true? Uh, the coloration, I doubt that the exact nature of the planks uh, would necessarily be matched, but I think probably they would match it. And uh, I could go measure the ones that are there, but it, eyeballing it, I would say that there is probably three-eighths of an inch spacing between each of the, that, that would be my guess. Uh, but you know, I'd have to go measure it. I also have some pictures of the float units in mahogany that they have on their website, which give me the impression that it's approximately similar, but it's kind of hard to tell without being more precise. Well, 
to Dave Kaplan's earlier point about habitat impacts, I'm not sure that slats at three eighths inch or like smaller than that are going to really make a difference in terms of subsurface light uh, penetration. So I, I I have the same thought uh, as Dave whenever we discuss docks because my understanding is that there is sort of a bare patch that forms beneath them because of the, the lack of light and mitigation may be appropriate, some small fashion, but um, I mention it just because the um, spacing of the boards, I, I think that's sort of a, a finer point than the, the overall impact. And Nathaniel Stevens. Yeah, so I just looked up a permit that I'm a uh, project I'm familiar with in situ. They specify as they specified three quarter inch spacing between the uh, between the decking materials. I mean, that wouldn't it, it wouldn't surprise me at all if that's what we have in our deck now. I mean, I guess three eighths just based on conjecture, and I'm sure there's some right. more precise way to estimate that, and I'm sure I could get feedback from them on it, but. So I guess maybe I would, I would request at least half inch to let some light in or three quarter inch. Nathaniel, was the purpose of the spacing for subsurface light? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Cool. Uh, I also have a follow-up question. Nathaniel brought up an interesting point. And although there's not a lot of docks in Redding, there, there is a lot of ADA paths and mm -hmm. access obviously three quarters of an inch is not going to meet those standards. How do you, how do you oh, correlate? Well, okay. Cor yeah. Well, no, I mean, it has to be butted up against each other, basically. Oh, uh, interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Um, but, is it, but I don't know if Glenn needs to meet those standards as a private. No, I, but doctor. again, so we don't know if Glenn's going to keep this house forever, but that's not a concern in front of the commission. If it was, I didn't know if that came up in some of right, your other right. uh, I, I would say that if, if ADA is a, a concern, there are more pressing things I would focus on <laughs> on the property, especially the access down to that region. It's way too to steep to get fundamentally rethought. And in fact, yeah, the, sure, the opportunity to purchase this property is that the previous owners um, have been growing older, as we all do. And uh, we're not prepared to handle those challenges uh, any longer. So uh, if I was thinking about ADA issues, that wouldn't be top of my, the first thing I would think about. Well, no, I, I brought that up not for your site and for your age, but I brought it up because Nathaniel seemed to have a lot of background and it would help me elsewhere. So it seemed appropriate to ask, uh, I, I, but I see this, that everyone's ready to jump on me and say this is not the right site, but uh, certainly the right question. Anyways, uh, let's move on. So we we have uh, a permit in front of us. We've talked about it. Seems like there's some mitigation that might be needed. Uh, I think we haven't fully discussed that aspect yet. I did say in my report, my site visit report, that I did feel like the bank was quite veg uh, vegetated. Uh, so much so that I don't think anyone's wandered left or right outside of straight in front of the deck that's there. But there might be a spot for some mitigation. And um, of course, that's not up for us to uh, to propose, but um, just to say that it would be nice to have some. Any other concerns that the commission has at this point? Uh, maybe we can move this along, Susan. Yeah, just quickly, um, as a as a point of process, maybe Chuck or Nathaniel are the ones to answer. We can't put mitigation in an RDA. That's not appropriate. I know we can we we sometimes put a few conditions, you know, like you you have to use hand tools or you you know whatever, but you can't put mitigation in RDAs. Am I not right about that? Yeah, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna get two yeah. two Canyon. different answers. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gonna get okay. you're gonna get you want, two different. Right. I'm more so the pure yeah. constructionist and Nathaniel will say, you know, absolutely, it's not the appropriate. No, let not Nathaniel answer for himself. 
No, I'm Chuck, gonna, Chuck hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. answer, Susan. All right. So, um, and I would say we have an applicant that seems to understand what the conservation wants. Sometimes it's worth a little bit of trust, and you can put conditions. And people have, and towns have put one or two, three conditions on these. It's inappropriate. I get it, but. Our agreement is with this applicant. So each commission is different. I think that it, in some cases it may be appropriate. Uh, do we have any way to enforce it? Well, that's the enforcement order. And um, it's not through this. So uh, essentially, without saying it, what Susan is letting everybody know that when you do an RDA, a request for determination of applicability, what you're saying when you're given a um, negative determination is that yes, you're working in the resource area or the buffer zone, but you're but this project doesn't alter it. So we're, we're left with nothing as enforcement. The commission's basically said no harm. So that's and then so for no harm, why would we want mitigation? But an agreement's an agreement, and that's where I stand. But let's let the commission weigh in on that. I I don't think it's worth asking for a notice of intent no, for some I didn't, mitigation. I, didn't mean that. I just wanted to understand. Okay. Do you agree, Nathaniel? No. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it doesn't be contrary. No. Uh yeah, I I generally agree with Chuck is that uh, yeah, but for negative, I mean you can put one or two conditions because essentially you're saying if you implement this condition, we're finding no alteration. So you could theoretically do it, but I think as a matter of law, there's been one court case that said, no, you, you can't really condition a determination. Okay. But Thank commissions do, all, do it as a matter of practice. So right. I Pesky think we law. should focus yeah. on what mitigation would we mm -hmm. want. I don't see any room for mitigation here, but I, I can't remember who suggested it if that person has that commissioner um, has. So it that. might be helpful, David Morgan. I took a few pictures. I don't know if they are better or worse than what um Glenn put up. Um you want, you want me to share those pictures again of the vegetation situation? Yeah, well, David could share the ones I sent. Did I send you pictures? No, I didn't. You, I didn't. You, you might have done a better job capturing the vegetation I, than I did. That's what I'm wondering. I, I'm not sure. Tonight. I'm not, I like your pictures, Glenn, but I'm not sure if mine give a little different view that might you don't need you don't need that you don't need to save my uh artistic <laughs> sense, but <laughs> yeah, so, so David Morgan's looking for them, but it looks like Mike Gildas game has a comment. I have a question that is have we decided um whether we can put a condition or two on negative determination? I mean, because we've done it before. We have precedent. I don't we've, think we've, we've ever done it before and gotten, mitigation. Even it this way, we've, we've done it before and gotten away with it. But right, even if we call it, uh, you know, sort of, please do these. Um, I, I don't know if there's a if we can go back to some regulation and base it on that. But I don't know. I I I think there's not much. Not much in the way of conditions that I can see that we could in, ask them to do. If yeah, if we can get over that it's not coming out and the agitator is not running six months out of the year, that could be a condition. Um, I don't know what there was another good condition, but I, I didn't write it down. I forgot David it. David Morgan <laughs> has his hand up, Chuck. Spacing. Spacing. Uh, David Morgan. Uh, yeah, Mike's right. That's just what I was going to say is that in order to get around the mitigation conversation that Dave and I have hit on in terms of, you know, the, the substrate of the lake being affected, maybe we can just condition the spacing so that we're less concerned about that. And then you don't have <laughs> in perpetuity, you know, that all mitigation has to stay et cetera, et cetera, the way we usually do our notices of intent. So um, that that would just kind of get us yeah. the notice of intent question. I just want to warn you guys that this is not a stick built dock. This is a modular dock. These components come in pieces pre-made. So mm -hmm. just, I think you may be asking for something that can't happen. 
And I, I don't have the answer to that, Chuck. I think it's a good point, but I, I'd have to get these folks on the phone. Uh, it's actually an individual who's doing it. So if you want, I could try to get them on the phone now, but I don't, I don't no. know. Yeah. Not now, but um, if that's a condition, you're going to have to, um, you're going to forget an answer. The benefit so, of the modularity, of course, is um, that the installation is very uh, low impact. So, okay. Any more? Any more questions? David Morgan, were you able to find those pictures or no? No, you sent me the ones of the gas line. Oh, I sent you the other ones. I didn't send you. Sorry, forgot to. Okay. What there. were you trying to show with those pictures? Uh, I just thought I would show more of the vegetation, but maybe Glenn can put his back up again then. Yeah, were you trying to show that there's a lot of vegetation there already? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you can see on the left that there's the the brush comes right up to the edge of where the dock is. And on the right, there's a little space there, but we've been on sites where it's clear from one side of the property to the other. And this is far different from that. And there doesn't seem to be much of the wave spacing there, but that's all right. Yeah, and I, I would tell, let you know that that one was stick built, so that one you could well it just means that someone built it custom you know like pieces sticks but but what's under that is just the you know the concrete and the rocks i mean there there's no great reason for it to have bigger spacing there's nothing growing under there under this one no but, no yeah. that's what i'm trying to tell mike yeah yeah uh, I'm with you on that. There, there, there's also the pump on, under there, but that's mm -hmm. yeah. So it's structure. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's either um, continue this with some questions, or can I get a some sort of conclusion here? I do think that we're really uh, running around in circles. So maybe there's some questions we need the answers to, or there may be some more comments or emotion. Having been on the site, um, I, I know I'm usually one of the people who wants more mitigation, <laughs> um, but having been on the site, I'm comfortable with this. Um, I think there there's some mature trees, um, there's vegetation on the sides. He took out a part of a fence that was blocking like, you know, turtles and things coming up on the the little little um, rocks that go down, you know, the stairway that goes down to the water. Um, so I'm feeling comfortable with this one. Um, it, it wasn't as, as much, um, damage to, to the, the, um, to, to the, the edge of the water as I've seen before, um, mm -hmm. other, other homes in the same area. So I feel comfortable and I would make a motion to, for a negative determination. Um, don't we have to close yeah. first? Oh, we have to close yeah, first. Just, Sorry. Oh, first. Yeah. Can I make a motion to close the hearing? Sure. Yeah. Can I get a second? <laughs> Mike Gilda's game. Okay. Um, Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. David White. Yes. David Kaplan. Yes. Brian McBride. Yes. Susan Chapnick. Yes. And Mike Gilda's game. Yep. Thank Chuck Taroni says yes. Okay, so let's discuss what some of the conditions that are not allowed could be. <laughs> so we're concerned. Does it make sense to not make this a, because we have Chapter 91 um, permit and we have this RDA? RDA is three years. Do we want to see this in three years and verify the conditions at that point? The condition is to come back in three years. No. What would we be verifying? <laughs> I guess the uh, the vegetation, the um, um, what vegetation? You know, the existing vegetation still remains. It's still kind of in the same general condition uh, that it is that it is right now. So um, this new use or this use with this you know different family doesn't uh, enlarge 
the area um, around the dock or the deck and the vegetation remains. But if they did anything to that, that would be an enforcement order if they didn't come back for another RDA or, right? So you why to, attach it to, to the you RDA? To find it. Well, mm -hmm. an RDA is three years. So okay. Got is it. this going to be uh, in, in perpetuity? I guess well, it effectively is. I mean, I tech with the past docs, we've issued a permit. And yeah, it's three years, but people still keep their keep their docs in. Okay. So you you really per remember you're really permitting the work more so than allowing. Right. It you're to not stay. permitting the structure because even when you do an NOI, it's three years, and you're not permitting the structure of the addition on the house. You're permitting the work being done, right? My well, I, the way I see it is we're making sure that the dock, the moorings, the floats, the locations all meet the bylaw. And if those things change, then that would be a problem. But if I'm, I'm good with it. This is, I just thought I'd throw it out because it was a little bit of uh, discussion about um, uh, mitigation. All right. So the next one that we said was the agitation. Is there a, is there a condition about agitating the water? No, I, I guess I would limit the agitation to, if the agitator is going to be used, the bubbler is going to be used. I'd limit it only to when there's actually ice there. Okay. Which I think would save Glenn electricity too. I understand these. Yes. Do, I, 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 frankly, I just do, I'm not saying what you should or should not make a condition, but I don't plan to even purchase one. I, my, my plan, and this is was their suggestion, was that if there is indication that it might occur, that they would be able to get one down to us in time. So I, I don't even have an intention to have one. Right. Okay. okay. And the next one that I remember was the spacing. Uh, and that, and I guess that might be a condition is if it's possible, um, space the decking boards three quarters, half inch to three quarters of an inch apart. Okay. So we came up with two oh, conditions. Just, yeah. Just have conditions that we can't have. Yeah. Let's have that. Right. Yes. <laughs> I'll make a motion to issue. Yeah, I a, thought you would. Yeah. Okay. Negative, <laughs> negative, negative positive. Uh, for the, uh, neg ne sorry. Uh, positive or negative. Yes, we have jurisdiction, but no notice of intent needs to be filed, provided those two conditions are met. Can I get a second? Second. All right. Mike, kill this game. Susan Chapnick. Yes. David White. Yes. David Kaplan. Yes. Brian McBride. Yes. Um, Mike yes. Gillis game. Mike Gillis game. Did I say <laughs> yes. that already? Sorry. Uh, Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. And Susan Chapnick. Chuck Taroni says yes. Susan, what did you say? I said yes. And tell me Great. the two conditions again, Chuck. One was if, if possible. possible spacing of the dock planks three quarters of an inch. And what was the other half, one? Half, half to oh, half, half an inch? No, half to three quarters. We're good Got with it. either or. Or somewhere okay. in between. Okay. And what was the other one? Um, the agitator would only go in on iced conditions. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. And Mike, are you okay? Do you understand what's going on? I, I think I understand. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the the only thing I would ask uh, you all. Um, around the vegetation, even though you didn't put it as a condition, is just in terms of your preference, is your preference for us to just sort of leave those things alone and or pare back any leaves that grow over the entry point? Or is your condition to have like a landscaper actively invest in fostering vegetation there? Because I, I can kind of do either, but I, I, I don't even know what's preferable from your perspective. I think we're saying just leave it alone. Okay, perfect. Right. But if you that, wanted to, that, that, that is definitely it. cheaper for me. Yeah. So, that's but great. if you ever wanted to enhance it, you know, then you you just put natives in. So you'd have to, of course, of David course, yeah. and find out. Okay, what yeah. what are the natives? You know, or or contact a landscaper. What yeah. can grow here right on the bank? You know, what can you that kind of thing? But you definitely are allowed to prune. You can. Yeah, prune. No, I, the only pruning that we do is to just make sure that that path isn't obstructed, which it does get that those things grow quite 
uh, strongly in the spring mm -hmm. and it does obstruct it. And then usually the landscaper comes and just pairs back a few. That's fine. Just don't use any herbicides. Branches. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're all good. Glenn, thank you so much. Great presentation. I'll well, never forget. You. I'll never forget your keyboard that I saw when we were in, in your house there. That oh, you mean the, the house that, everybody. The that's pink. wild, man. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I got it because my daughters uh, get a kick out of it. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank and you. Uh, Thank you. David will send that permit out to you. Uh, Live long and prosper. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Bye now. Okay, moving right along, we have a request for determination of applicability in RDA from the Boston Gas Company for multiple locations. This application is for multiple locations and will be led by Vice Chair Susan Chapnick. Uh, we'll facilitate this discussion. Susan, can you take over at this point? Sorry, was having trouble unmuting. <laughs> Oh, please bear with me for a minute. Um, just finding the, okay, all right. Um, the first, uh, there are two requests for determination from Boston Gas Company. I believe Ty and Bond is here to represent them. Thank you. I'm just going to review it very quickly and then turn it over to the representative. Yes. But we're we're only we're doing one at a time because they're separate. Yes. So this is the first one for yes. the multiple locations. Right. So the first one is um, a request for determination of applicability under the Wetlands Protection Act and the Arlington Bylaw for Wetlands Protection for gas main replacements at North Union Street, Gordon Road, Wheaton Road, Patrick Street, and Purcell Road in Arlington. And as um, we know that um, the Arling our Arlington bylaw and implementing regulations require um, that gas maintenance come before the Conservation Commission for review. The, um, this project um, is a lot for just for orientation is near the Thompson School, that's North Union Street runs in front of the school, and then the other roads um, run um, perpendicular to North Union Street um, down to Decatur. We did a site visit uh, on October 16th, myself, Chuck Taroni, and um, David Morgan. We walked the area. The, um, the main replacements are going to be actually in the roadway. They don't impact any um, any other area other than in the roadways itself. We saw a nice flock of turkeys there. Hopefully they won't be impacted. Um, the area's in a hundred year floodplain to Alewife Brook, but there's no other jurisdictional area. And I'd like to turn it over now to um, Ty and Bond. And is that um, Isabel? Yes, hi. Thank you. Hi, if you could introduce yourself for the record and you can present the project. Sure. My name is Isabel Arthur Long. I'm an environmental scientist with Ty and Bond. Also with me today is Chad Raymer. Um, so thank you, Susan. That's an excellent summary of the proposed work. I will, um, I don't know if it's helpful for me to share my screen to show figures. Would that be? Yes, that would be great. Thank you. Great. All right. Can everybody see that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so, so the full scope of, of the work that Boston Gas Company is proposing is along North Union Street and several adjacent streets. The only portion of that work that is jurisdictional under the Wetlands Protection Act and, and bylaw is within Gordon Road. So the full project is proposing around 1,800 linear feet of gas main replacement, um, but within jurisdictional resource areas, that's only around uh, 215 linear feet uh, within bordering land subject to flooding here. Um, so as Susan mentioned, all of the work will occur within existing paved right-of-way. Uh, the right-of-way will be restored to existing conditions and existing elevations so uh, you know there will be no loss in in compensatory flood storage um 
the work is a gas main replacement, which is considered exempt under the Wetlands Protection Act. So uh, we are looking for confirmation from the Conservation Commission that that exemption would carry over to the Arlington uh, bylaw. And I can show an image here of Gordon Street. So this is what Gordon Street looks like in that boarding land subject to flooding area. So if, I, I don't know if the commission has any, any questions about uh, the jurisdictionality of proposed work. I have a few questions. Um, I don't see any hands up from the well, I'm gonna put my hands up you're welcome. Yeah. Oh, okay. Do you want to go first, Chuck? Sure. I had a process question. I don't understand why you have to bring this in as a limited project. I mean, you're not going through resource area. It seems to me that this could this could just be uh, a regular RDA, um, and you just meet meet the criteria as um, as laid out in our regulations and in the uh, WPA. Can you tell me why? It is why an RDA, it isn't it? It is. Yeah. Can you it tell is me why? RDA, Hold on, guys. Can you yeah. tell me Perfect. why it's a limited project and you couldn't meet the standards? I don't believe it was proposed as a limited project. It's a request for determination to consider to confirm exemption status. I thought I saw that on the application that you were calling out, like ten five three whatever D or whatever. So I can pull that up. Um, this is this is our clause about exemption status. Um, it's exempt at ten point oh two two a two. Um, because it consists of gas main replacement. So that's not limited stat that's not limited. No. No, that's a the that's limited project. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 10, 10. 10. 5. 5, 5, 3, yeah. 5, 3 is the limited project. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go to um David Morgan. Thanks. I also just have a process point. The question about exemption there is moot because that was drawn from an old version of our regulations. And I, I sent a clarifying email to National Grid and Die and Bond to explain that further. But basically, the question comes down to the positive or negative determination on the RDA nothing to do with exemption all right thank you david yeah that's how i'm reading the rda so are there any other questions i had um i had one yeah. um well just to kind of understand this whole thing so why is the gas main getting replaced is there a leak is uh, I mean, the reason is it past its lifespan? Sure. Um, generally, it's the it's the age of these gas mains. They were um, mainly mainly installed, you know, in the in the 50s and earlier is, is my understanding. And it's um, replacement, I believe, of well, I have to look at the drawings here to see what um, what the pipe material is. Um, but generally, we're re replacing with plastic piping that is more resilient than say previous pipes that were made of cast iron um, that are that are leak prone um, and required to be replaced by the state. So you're not replacing these because there are active leaks there now? No. Okay, ju just because of age and then you're replacing them with high density PVC or some, something? Right, more, yeah. more resilient materials. Okay, all right. Um, and I think Boston Gas has an operation and maintenance plan, or do you, or do you, whoever is doing the work, in terms of sediment and erosion control and protecting um, catch basins? I don't know if there were any yes. on Gordon Road. Um, yes. So um, the the typical best management practices that would be used um, were included with the RDA. Uh, these okay. are excerpts from. 
national grid standard practices. Okay. Uh, and and um, I think so. So what is that bail? So this is a this is you know if there if there it's a weed free watering okay. were to be required. There's there's certainly more um, details shown here than okay. what would be anticipated to be needed for for this right. project. Right. That's in mm. DLSF. You know we're not not anticipating to encounter groundwater, you know, within the, within the roadway. Um, but this is sort of to cover all bases. These are, these are the standard um, best management practices they would be reaching for. Uh, okay. I just wanted to make sure that, that we weren't using hay because that wasn't clear to me that we're using straw because that's a yes. requirement of the, of our local body. Okay. Yes. Uh, Thank you. I have no more questions. Does, does anybody else have a question from the commission? I'd make a motion to close the hearing. Thank you, Nathaniel. Is there a second? Second. Was that Mike? It's Brian. Brian. Sorry. Sorry, Brian. Um, and any further discussion at closing? Okay, then I will take a roll call vote for closing. Um, Mike Gildesgame? Yes. Chuck Taroni. Yes. David White. Yes. Dave Kaplan. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. And Brian McBride. Yes. Did I miss anybody? Myself. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So we're closing the hearing. And would somebody like to make a motion? Well, let's talk about about the RDA, or do you want to talk about conditions? I just want to make sure that all the silt sacks, and I'm assuming they go in no matter what. Uh, it's not a discretionary item. So all the silt sacks on Gordon Street, if needed, have a uh, curb inlet, um, uh, something to block the curb inlet. I guess it has a piece that would be installed um, just to make sure that we are blocking all the sediment. And, and we looked at some on this road and they and, and the, the storm drains did look quite um, quite filled up, but still I think it's a good practice to go through there and, and have those blocked up during the process. Thank you, Chuck. Anybody else? I'll make a motion to issue a determination that the work is exempt under the Wetlands Protection Act, but not exempt under the bylaw, but no notice of intent is required. Okay, so basically it's a positive negative determination of the RDA. Is that correct? Well, it's we not quite because it it's, it's, it's an exempt, yeah, it's exempt under the act, uh, okay. but it's within jurisdiction under the bylaw. Got it. Okay. Um, I'll second. Was was, was there that any uh, Kaplan? Yes. Was there any uh, public comment, or did we close the hearing? Oh before? my goodness! Oh, sorry. I forgot about Thank that. You. Yes. Some, and nobody reminded me. I hope there was nobody from the public who wanted to make a comment. Well, we could ask now and reopen the hearing. I, I can ask yes. now and reopen the hearing. Um, could you stop sharing? Um, just so I could see everybody who's here. Thanks so much, Isabel. Um, is there anybody? on this uh, Zoom call who wanted to make a comment about this project. You could use the raise hand function or just unmute. So I am a resident on Gordon Road, so I am here to understand what this impact was going to be on my residence. So it sounds like uh, the details that I'm more interested in are probably from another committee, but I do appreciate that I was able to join this call. Sure, and I think if you reach out to Isabel, she could put you in touch with the right person to I, answer I your questions. I would be happy to do that. Yes. Right, because that I think that's more construction and actually what they're doing on your road versus right. what we're we're just protecting the jurisdictional area. Yes, right. I, I've okay. been understanding that as I've been listening. Thank you. Okay. My okay. my okay. guess, Ruth, and I and I'm very happy to to connect you. Um perhaps David can pass along my email or I can send it in, in the a chat to you. Um but generally speaking, they're able to just close down one lane of the road to do these installations. 
Uh, well, it's so it is it is a private private way, and it looks like the gas main is directly in front of the driveways of three of the residences. So I, I have concerns about flooding issues that happen on the road already. Um, any change, like a half an inch change in elevation, just means where where's the flooding going to go next year? So I I do have I do have questions and concerns about what this is going to be in the short term and in the long term. I see. Yes, and in terms of in terms of access, I'm happy to to connect you with um, with someone from Boston Gas Company to address those concerns. As far as elevations go, it is we're within bordering land subject to flooding, and therefore absolutely required to return elevations to existing conditions. So um, there there will not be any increase in in elevation there. Yeah, excellent. Well, increase or decrease because just just depends on which direction the water is going to go. Um, it already floods, uh, and it's a skating rink in the winter. So just kind of where where is the skating rink going to move to uh, next winter? Right, right. So Nathaniel, give me your sage advice with that. Do we need to reopen formally? No, I think not. No, I don't okay. think they're commenting on the wetlands aspect of it. Right. Okay. Yeah. But this Thank is you. more, it's going to be the paving. It's not the wetlands. Okay. Thank yeah, you very so, much. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Are we okay, Nathaniel? Yes. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think I think it's fine. Okay. Proceed. Thank you very yeah. much, um, Ruth. Okay. Um, so I'm going back. Oh, I have a motion from Nathaniel that this is exempt from the WPA. It's not exempt from the bylaw, but no NOI is required. We have a um recommended uh one recommended condition from chuck that um all silt sacks on gordon street if needed have something to block the curb inlets and i don't know if there was i don't think there was any other proposed condition um so i'm mm -hmm. wait was there uh, well, other, someone mentioned using making sure it's hay, hay, sorry, straw rather than hay, but I think that right. was answered. It was answered, so I, so I don't think it needs yeah. to be conditioned. Right. Um, so I'm waiting for a second then. I thought we had it, but I can't remember who. Dave okay. Kaplan? Was it Dave Kaplan? Yeah. Yes? Okay. Yep, sorry, I was muted. Yep. I, I seconded then asked about public comments. <laughs> Got it. Thank you. You're keeping me honest and I do appreciate that. Um, okay, so I will take a vote then. That's where we are. Okay. Um, David White. Yes. Chuck Taroni. Yes. Mike Gildeskane. Yes. Brian McBride. Yes. Dave Kaplan. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. And Susan Chapnick says yes. So that's the first RDA. And then I'm going to the second RDA. <laughs> okay. And I, I suppose, Isabel, you're going to present this as well. I will just review the project for the commission very briefly. Although, so, is, uh, Susan, oh, Susan yeah. I think you're taking Isabel's job. <laughs> so Am I? I? Could okay. It. I was just going to read the notice. I just read, read the notice of intent. Uh, okay. I mean, the notice of the RDA and then um, the fact that we did a site visit, but I'll try to be briefer. Um, the This hearing is considering a request for determination of applicability under the Wetlands Protection Act and Arlington Bylaw for Wetlands Protection for Gas Main Replacements at Mystic Street and Old Mystic Street in Arlington. This is the area, if those of you not familiar, that's up by Windows on the Mystic. Um, and as we just discussed with the previous one, um, this project is exempt under the WPA, but is not exempt under our bylaw. And that, so we're, we're having this hearing. Um, the area has a 200 foot riverfront to a brook. The brook is unnamed in the application, but it's actually Herbert Meyer Brook. Um, those on the commission may remember we had another project near here. Um, just a few months ago. It's also within the 100 foot buffer and the um, adjacent upland resource area. Um, so I will let Isabel share her screen again and we can look at some more pictures. And I have some pictures too that I did give David this time. So we might put them up later. 
Excellent. Let me know when you can see that. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, so thank you again, Susan. Um, so this project is much the same as the last. This time we're looking at riverfront area and the 100 foot buffer zone and aura. And there's a total of 2,300 linear feet of gas main replacements proposed. However, only uh, around 280 will be within riverfront area and 70 um, linear feet within the 100 foot buffer zone and aura. Um, I think maybe the most helpful figure is this orthophotograph. Um, so right up here at the top, you can see the stream, which thank you for informing us it has a name. We couldn't <laughs> find that documented anywhere. Yeah. Um, it crosses Mystic Street um, at this location, and the work will not cross the stream, but uh, but is within 100 feet of it. Um, so portions of the work, both within Mystic Street and Old with Mystic Street, are are within these resource areas. Same with, with the other project. Um, all work will occur within the roadway right-of-way. All work will be restored to existing conditions. The same best management practices will be used. Um, I will pull up an image of that area. So this is the Mystic Street crossing um, over that perennial stream and a, a closer up image of, of the stream crossing itself here. Uh, again, we will not be crossing this bridge, uh, but this is the stream in question. I'll mention there's bordering land subject to flooding in the vicinity, but not overlapping with the project site. There any the BVWs questions? on that side, on the in on the upland side uh, versus the lake side of Mystic Street, is that right? The BVW? Yeah, no, we're, you're saying the bordering land subject to flooding. Oh, I'm sorry, BLSF. I'm sorry, BLSF. I thought you said there's. I thought you said there's BVW. So BLSF. Okay. Not that we or DEP is aware of. Okay. No, I wasn't aware of either. That's what I was asking. Okay. Right. Just so, just riverfront area. Right. I I would ask um, David to put up the pictures because it looks a little different. Um, sure. That wall looked looked um complete and it's not right now where the brook is as as at least what we saw the other day so we did a site visit on the 16th this is um a standing there's just to show that there's a catch basin right by the brook the brook is to the right of here i just wanted to show you that how close that is and then that's that wall that you see up there that Isabel showed you. But if you look at the next picture, I think you'll see how, um, yeah. So it's 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 not all kind of part of the walls fallen into the brook, um, which I think DPW was supposed to take care of, but has not yet. So I just wanted to show you the, the, the degraded area and I'm a little concerned about um, erosion and sedimentation there because of that. Um, this is looking down towards the where the brook is. Um, so personally, I'm concerned about the catch basin and things things getting in there because of the work that's going to be done there. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, so the, the, that would have to be protected, obviously, and erosion controls and. Yeah. Absolutely, there would there would be erosion controls in place protecting that resource area. Even if there, you know, if it, even if it weren't for that hole, um, the work will be approximately twenty five feet from from that crossing as well. So it's you know not right on top of not right on right on top of the wall. Okay, I see. Dave ha Kaplan has his hand up. Dave. Yeah, um, I just wanted to confirm the site conditions. There, it looked like if the work is happening within the street, it looked like there was a curb line on either side. So I'm just wondering what the opportunity is for, you know, impact to that stream through the broken wall, um, or if that's at a higher elevation that we don't necessarily need to be overly concerned about, or do we still need to run erosion controls to where the wall used to be? Let me see if I can pull up the, um, the contoured 
map sheet. Dave, if I'm understanding your question correctly, that is on top of sidewalk with, with a yep. curb separating. So yep. I don't think that there's going to be impact. I think probably the nearest entryway onto that sidewalk is well into the uh, work site, closer to Arlington, away from Winchester. So I, I, I don't see any problem with the hole being there in terms of project impacts. OK, thank you. I will share screen real quick again and uh, point out that the catch basins in this area all drain directly into Herb Meyer Brook. Um, so protecting those with the silt sacks and the um, in the protections that Chuck alluded to earlier um, or described earlier will be important. This one here, at, uh, this is basically where the bridge is and that wall that's deteriorated. Um, the one that was pictured where we were standing on the site visit, it's actually a double catch basin with an inlet uh, at the curb. So that one would be particularly important. I mean, right now it's all gummed up with uh, pine needles and leaf debris and stuff like that. But, um, you know, when you clear it out, put the protections in and maintain that for the, the duration. So I would just recommend commissioners consider that as a condition. Thanks, David. Are there any other comments from commissioners or the agent? And then I will do public comment. <laughs> sure, I had one comment. So the sure. uh, the storm drains and the curb inlet are, are uh, impacted by leaves. Is there a BMP, or should we add a condition to say that all the leaves need to be removed prior to the storm drain cover being pulled out to put in the silt sack? Or is that just something that would happen automatically? My fear is that they'll rip up the uh, the grading and all the leaves will drop in. Isabel, do you do you know if that's in the specifics of the BMPs? I I don't believe there's a a specific clause about removing leaves from the storm drains prior to installing erosion yeah. controls if that's something um, that yeah, can be concerned of, that in. I think that's a good point. It's it's they're really really clogged. One of Susan's pictures just showed yeah. Just totally impacted by leaves and grit. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. okay. Any other um, comments from commissioners? I have a general permitting question. Does your street opening permit require that you clean the um, sumps when you're done? Um, I unfortunately don't uh, handle those permits, and so I'm. I don't have the answer for that. I don't think that they do. I don't think yeah, I don't think those those usually do, David. I think it's just a dig. Sorry, um, especially when you're protecting with the silt sacks, should be fine. But just throwing it out there. Okay, I'm going to open this. Um, hearing up for public comment. If you have a public comment, you can unmute yourself um, or use the raise hand function in the reaction button at the bottom of your screen, and I will recognize you. And I don't see anybody. Am I missing anybody, David? If I didn't see, I don't see anybody. Okay, I'm going to close public comment and go back to the commission and review potential Conditions. Um, I heard two. One... So we should close first. Oh, we need to close first, right? And then review conditions. Move Thank to you. close the hearing. Thank Second. you, Mike. Mike and Chuck. Okay. Um, any um, discussion? I don't see any. And I will take a little vote. Well, oh. So I, I to close. Think that I, I just know that Nathaniel said the last one that we're we're. Um, we have a finding is the close where you put the finding in Nathaniel is that where you want that um that we're 
it's exempt from the WPA, but it's it's, it's our determine. Yeah, we're issuing a determination, so we just yeah. check the box, right? Yeah. yeah. Confirm. Yeah, I'd make the same motion that I did before, which is. But is that after that we close? Did you make the motion, after, or do we, after or do we, we close we the hearing? Through? Sure. Right. So I'm doing. I'm voting on closing the hearing first. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. That was the question. Yeah. Is that okay? Okay. okay. So that comes next. Right. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. That's all. I get confused too. Okay. So we're voting to just close the hearing. We had um, Mike make the motion. Chuck second. And I'm going to call a roll call vote. Brian McBride. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. David White. Yes. Dave Kaplan. Yes. Mike Gildeskame. Yep. Chuck Taroni. Yes. And Susan Chapnick says yes. So the hearing's closed. And now we're going to talk about conditions and motions. So we had two conditions I heard. One is that we want all the storm drains, the catch basins to be protected um, with silt sacks and what did you say before? Inlet protection. And inlet. Curb. inlet. No, it's curb inlet. Curb inlet protection. And we would like the storm drains to be cleaned from leaves and debris prior to this protection being placed. Yeah, and I'm that. only talking about the ones on the surface. On the surface, right. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. Was there anything else? Okay, then what I'm waiting for now is a motion. Make a motion to issue a determination that the work ex is exempt under the Wellness Protection Act, but not under the bylaw. But no notice of intent is required to be filed, provided those conditions with, with those conditions. Second. That was Dave Kaplan. Yes. Thank you. Mm. Okay. Any further discussion? Then we'll take a roll call vote. Mike Gildeskame. Yes. Chuck Taroni. Yes. David White. Yes. Brian McBride. Yes. Dave Kaplan. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. And Susan Chapnick says yes. So um, Dave, David Morgan will issue um, the forms for the RDA, Isabel. And um, when do you think you would get started on this work? I believe as soon as the permits are in hand, they'll they'll green light the work to proceed. Okay. So I was just curious. There's there's no problem with weather issues on when this work gets done if there's a major storm predicted i'm sure they would avoid that week um but but i believe that the intention is to get get it completed before winter okay thank you very much thank you for your for your presentations appreciate it thank you all mm -hmm. good night back to you chuck all right well susan did a great job okay uh any comments that um that we didn't anticipate that are on the agenda from the commission or anyone attending tonight's meeting. If you need to use the reaction button or use the raise hand function, um, you can address the commission at this time. Seeing none, uh, we have finished our agenda and I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Move. Okay. Second. Seconded by I don't know who. <laughs> I know. So Susan, did you catch that? I got so, Mike. <laughs> and David White. And David White. And we can all Mike. just wave. You like that? If everyone's good, we'll just wave. I'm good. And good see night, you everybody. Next week. Good night, everyone. Good night. See ya. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. 